Bible, go ahead and open up to Exodus chapter 20. We have been working through relationships, the family dynamic. Uh, we took a look at the beginning. Uh, the very first relationship was our Heavenly Father with Adam. But then amongst humans, the first relationship was Adam and Eve. Um, we talked about those, the relationship dynamics between a husband and wife, what God desired for it to be. Um, we then moved to parents and children, and we took a look at parents' responsibilities to children. Uh, those include training or teaching. Uh, it includes discipline, which is also part of the training and teaching. It includes provision, and it also gives us some warnings of what not to do and that we are not supposed to, uh, depending on your translation, um, vex or, um, okay, I just lost the word. It was here a minute ago. Do not incur them to wrath. Now, what does this look like for you? I'm not real sure. Because your family dynamic is probably very different from my family dynamic. Matter of fact, my family dynamic is very different from my family dynamic because Christy and I have two radically different uh, upbringings. Um, we have moved into what I want to go into today is the reverse part of this. We've looked at the parents' responsibilities toward their children. And now we're going to look at the children's responsibilities to their parents. Okay? So, does anybody know what is significant about chapter 20 in Exodus? It's the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> this is what God laid out as the, uh, the rules, if you will, as to what the people of Israel were to be like. Uh, we see that the first four deal with God and their relationship with God. And then the remaining six deal with the interpersonal relationships one with another. Um, so I'm going to jump down to verse 12. Uh, this is the first of the six that deals with interpersonal relationships. So verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And I, I always found it kind of interesting that the very next one is, you shall not murder. <laughs> I think God knew what he was doing. Um, the word honor here is kabod. Uh, it's to make heavy or to honor, okay? Um, the, the idea behind this is that there is a weight to it, okay? It, it's not something that's light or frivolous. Um, we see this uh, kind of echoed in Leviticus chapter 19, uh, verse three. I'm just gonna read that for you. You don't have to turn there. Uh, speaking to the people of Israel, it says, every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Now, revere here is, is actually a different word. It's yare, uh, to fear, to stand in awe of, uh, to reverence, honor, or respect. Now, why do you suppose that as God is establishing uh, these rules, these guidelines, for people that he is calling his own. Why do you suppose it is that he deals so much with parents and children, but in the Ten Commandments, we don't really see a whole lot of the personal relationship between husbands and wives? Why, why do you suppose that is? Not everyone has a husband or a wife. 
possible. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure why this is. Uh, I think do not commit adultery uh, deals with the husband and wife relationship. There's a lot of other things that go on. Um, I think God focuses with intent on parents and children because he is our Heavenly Father and we are his children. Okay? Um, but there's a couple things that, that come out of this that I want to look at. Uh, just look into the scriptures and, and see how God desires the family dynamic to work. Um, in this case, specifically, children to their parents. Okay. Now, you will always be your parents' children, but you won't always be children. Okay? Because I can still look at my, my kids and, and, you know, I told you a couple weeks ago, it completely blew my mind when I realized Thaddeus, our baby, is turning 18. I mean, I knew it was coming. I could count, you know, and, and, and it just shook me because it's like, wait a minute. Everybody's growing up. Everybody's moving on, and and that's the the nature of life is change. Uh, but it, for whatever reason, you know, with the other kids, it was like, yeah, eighteen, bye. <laughs> you know. Um, with Thaddeus, it was like, oh wait a minute, who's going to take out the truck? <laughs> And I see Christy giving me the eyeball. <laughs> We're going to have to renegotiate our contract. <laughs> um, Proverbs deals a bit. Proverbs chapter 1, <coughs> verse 8. Go ahead and flip there. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of the verses in Proverbs, remembering that Proverbs are not promises. They're observations. They're what we typically see. And we, we understand that the very first part of Proverbs, uh, these are written by Solomon, the vast majority of them are written by Solomon, uh, expounding his wisdom, the wisdom that God had given him. And we see in the first one that, that he kind of lays out why he's giving these. Uh, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses down, and then we'll focus on one of them. So starting in verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon... Son of David, King of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance to understand a proverb and a saying, the word of the wise, and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, so he's, this is why the Proverbs are being written. Okay? And then in verse 8, he kind of shift tracks a little bit. And he says, hear my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching." For they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Okay? Now, right here, we understand that Solomon is laying these things out generally as Proverbs for people, but specifically for his sons. Okay? Um, and in this case, very likely, uh, Rehoboam, who would follow him as king of Israel. Unfortunately, Rehoboam uh, didn't take the first thing he did as a king was mess up. Um, but I want you to hear what he is saying here as regards children to their parents. Hear, my son, your father's instruction. And remember we talked about <coughs> the responsibilities of parents to their children. Well, the first responsibility was to teach them, to train them. Okay? So, so Solomon is laying this out again. Um, if you are not giving instruction, your son can't hear it. Um, you know, that's, that's one of those things that is always a trick as a parent, especially a parent of multiple children, is who did I tell what to? You know, um, we used to have, we actually still have a grease board, 
uh, and it was broken down by days of the week and each of the kids and what chores they were responsible on a day of the week. Well, we still have the grease board and it just says Thaddeus all. <laughs> um, but as, no, I'm kidding, it does I don't even know what it says anymore. Um, a parent's responsibility is to teach. A child's responsibility is to learn. Okay. Notice that it speaks both fathers and mothers. Okay. Um, they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. I remember very clearly being a teenager and thinking I was oh so smart and realizing now I was oh so stupid. <laughs> I thought I had all the answers and I just shook my head at the, the generations before me thinking, man, they just don't get it. Um, you know, my mom and dad were so old fashioned. Um, and, and quite honestly, uh, you know, my parents did Christy and I a, an incredible um, service because they did not push themselves into our lives as a married couple. Okay. They were always there if we ever needed anything. They were always there to talk, but they didn't insinuate themselves into our relationship and tell us how it should work. Okay. Um, that meant that, you know, for the first what year is this? <laughs> For the first 32 and a half years of our marriage, um, things were rough. Um, because I didn't learn. You know, um, you know the, what is that saying? More is caught than taught. Um, I observed a lot of the dynamic with my parents amongst themselves and with their relationship with the kids. And those ingrained in me, instilled in me, some decisions as to how I was going to be as a husband and a, a father. And uh, sometimes those things weren't all that great. Um, I, I know a lot of you probably won't believe this, but I was pretty strict as a dad. <laughs> I know, it's hard, right? Um, Christy and I believed that every one of our children were smart enough to get A's in school. Okay? And the house rule was, you get straight A's. If you get less than an A, you're grounded from your video games, telephone, whatever, uh, until you get your grade back up, and that will involve tutoring and, and getting help and uh, bringing homework home for us to check and make sure you're getting what's done. Um, now, here, here's the thing. All of our kids were smart enough to get straight A's. But sometimes they would have a teacher that they just couldn't learn from. We know that because when we homeschooled, one of our sons just had a very, very difficult time learning, uh, specifically math, with the way that we taught it. In all of his years at home and in school, he only had one teacher that made it so that he could understand it. Okay. Now, uh, when they're in high school and they're getting to that point where I was when you, know, you think your parents are fools, um, we required that he do the work. And if his teacher would verify that he was doing the work, that he was going to tutoring, he was trying, he was doing his best, then a C might be okay for him. But if he's goofing around and dinking around in choir and he gets a B, we're gonna make him sing. And not, not musically, okay? Um, so there, there is a little bit of a difference uh, and we talked about this when we were dealing with parents and how you raise your children and uh, what the instruction is. But now the, the opposite side of this is as children, uh, our re responsibility is to learn. And this, I think, doesn't stop. Okay. Um, our parents, even now, um, you know, I'm 50. 
I know it doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> Don't tell me what you think I look like. Um, oh, and by the way, segue real quick. Uh, grandbaby number 10 is en route. We just got word that uh, Donovan and Carrie are expecting another child, so keep them covered in prayer. Well, I'm just checking, because you never know. Okay, all right. Um, so learning. Uh, my parents, well, my mom, still has stuff to teach me, if I will listen. What is the biggest problem with listening? Um, actually, there's two that come to mind. The first is that... Um, if you don't feel like they have anything worth listening to, you're just not going to listen to them. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, all too often, when we're listening, we're listening to... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all too often, we're listening so that we can respond, not so that we hear. Okay. So, first, first in Proverbs, Proverbs is, uh, Solomon is laying out these Proverbs for his son... Uh, to gain wisdom, to pursue wisdom. Uh, flip over to chapter 23, and we're going to see again, as he's going through this, Solomon is going to come back around. Um, uh, Proverbs 23. Down in verse 22, again, remember that Solomon is talking to his son. Verse 22 says, Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Now, I think here is a significant truth for our culture and our society. Because there are times, uh, well, let me, let me preface what I'm going to say with this. There are times where our parents are going to have to be in a facility that will look after their health. Because it is not in our ability to do so. Okay? When my dad was to the end of his life, um, there were things that we could not do for him. And we had to have, thank, we were fortunate that he was able to stay home, uh, but we had to have people come in to do things that we could not do. Uh, and especially for those uh, whose parents or grandparents uh, had issues with Alzheimer's or dementia or Parkinson's, um, sometimes it's necessary to get them the care that they need that they can't receive in your home. Okay? But there's a whole other group of people that just don't want to be bothered. Okay. I think this is what Solomon is addressing right here. Uh, do not despise your mother when she is old. Um, my mom is a neat lady. She has a lot of wisdom. She put up with a lot of nonsense from four of her five children. <clears throat> <laughs> my mom has habits quirks um, when dad passed away uh, my youngest brother Keith <clears throat> moved into um, he and mom moved into a home together so that he could be there to take care of her uh, and my mom says well you know, I don't know that it was a better deal because I think I just got your, your father in his son. <laughs> because Keith has a lot. You think I have pet peeves? Keith has way more pet peeves than I do. And um, mom's quirks can really annoy. Okay. Really just, you know, just, just like my quirks. My quirks can really annoy. 
but keep being overly sensitive to particular areas where mom has quirks. It makes for almost, you could almost make this thing a situational comedy. Um, you know, kind of like a mother-son uh, odd couple. Um, Keith will spend time in the living room and for no reason will get up and he'll go into his bedroom. And it's probably because he hears mom eating. And, and, and I'm sorry, I can relate to this. I don't want to hear you enjoying your food. <laughs> the mouth noises can just really, oh Lord. Gum was verboten in our house. And one of my children, who happens to be not male, loves to chew gum. And then she grew up and felt like the rules didn't apply. <laughs> and she came into my house, chewing <laughs> gum. <laughs> and it didn't stop. It just goes on and on. Now, um, see, I gotta stop there because she might kick me out when I'm old. <laughs> Satch and Ben, would you love me? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay, so responsibilities of children to their parents. The first thing is they need to learn from them. They need to understand that their parents have something to offer. Um, I, I hate the mentality uh, in America today where, where people that are in their golden years are cast off as if they have nothing to offer. Uh, I would encourage you, take time to listen to them. They have some incredible, amazing stories. Okay? Second thing that we look at here in verse 22 um, is that you don't necessarily ever stop listening. Okay? And you don't forsake their care. Um, so, responsibilities, honor, learn, take care. I'm going to jump up to uh, New Testament, Matthew chapter 15. Go ahead and turn there, because we're going to deal with this for just a minute. Um, Jesus had a lot to say about family relationships and how people should treat one another. Matthew chapter 15. Starting in verse 1. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. I'm pretty sure my mom was a Pharisee. <laughs> she required soap. Verse 3, he answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother. And whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God. He need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, <coughs> you have made void the word of God, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Now we're going to back up just a little bit. Um, back up here. In verse 4, we see that Jesus reiterates uh, honor, the, the uh, fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. And he actually quotes uh, another passage. You know, you, you think God is serious about children honoring their parents. Um, he actually gave them a directive that if uh, a, a child, or actually I won't even say a child, um, a son or daughter would not 
honor their parents, would not obey their parents. Um, the parents had a, a method of recourse where they would take them to the village uh, elders, actually at the city gates, and they would present their case. Hey, this is our son. He's a drunkard and a slanderer, and, and he speaks ill of us. And the punishment for that um, was to be stoned. He was to be killed. Okay? You go, wow, that's, that's serious. I think we need to understand that this was not a one-time event. This was an ongoing thing. And he would have been given time after time after time after time to make it right. This was the last resort. Okay? God is very, very serious when he tells us to honor our parents. It's not a game. It's not one of those that you can pick and choose to ignore. Okay? Well then, he's speaking to the Pharisees. Um, they're upset because the disciples didn't wash their hands before they eat. Uh, and then he lists these two commands, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. But then they had a tradition whereby whatever was theirs, they could uh, say that they were giving it to God. Jeannie, do you remember what the word is for that? Which word? I'm sorry? Which for, word? for the word where they would withhold it from their parents as, as a gift to God. It's Corbin. It's Corbin, that's it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, now, I don't know what the end result of that was as far as what happened to the gift according to what was laid out in the Torah that was to be given to the temple but from what we kind of in, infer here I think they were saying well it's God so I'm going to hold on to it for a, for a little while um, and Jesus is furious with the Pharisees because their tradition allowed them a way to slip out from under the commandment of honoring father and mother, of making sure that mom and dad were taken care of. Um, and, and if you look at this, uh, verse 7, Jesus calls them hypocrites, um, <coughs> mask wearers. Jesus has a lot to say about the Pharisees. Um, he warns us not to be like the Pharisees, not to eat of the leaven of the Pharisees, that we should not go around making these grandiose speeches, uh, that we shouldn't do our praying and our giving where people would see us so that we might honor God instead of having the people honor us. Um, he had quite a bit to say about their traditions um, and their they're circling about the command so that they're not necessarily in violation of the command, but there's, there's just little room for play. Um, so, Jesus reiterates that we are to honor our parents. Um, Matthew chapter 19, don't turn here, verse 19. Uh, this is the passage of the rich young ruler. He comes to Jesus and he says... Um, Master, what must I do to be saved? And, and he says, um, he gives him the commands, and, and one of the commands is, honor your father and mother. And he says, well, I've done this all my life. And then Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, go and sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Um, now, this is a unique story because in our culture today, how many pastors would have a rich person walk in and basically give them carte blanche to be a part of their church and they say go sell everything you have give the money to the poor and then come follow me and then when he turned around and walked away because he was sad because he had a lot of stuff uh, wouldn't chase him down and say well okay let's look at maybe 10 percent five percent three percent you know whatever works for you um, too many churches are overly concerned with the monetary aspect of the church and not concerned enough with the holiness of the church. Um, Jesus loved that, that young man. 
and yet he sent him away. He let him go. He let him choose. And he walked away. He didn't pursue it. Okay? Um, so Jesus reiterates uh, again a second time, honor your father and your mother. Okay? Uh, in the Greek, the, the word honor there is tomeo, not tomato, tomao, and it is to estimate or fix the value of something. Okay? Um, but see, we are not fixing the value. God fixes the value. We get to appreciate the value. We get to understand the value. Um, <clears throat> we're going to move <clears throat> to Paul. Um, now, here's where we have a couple of things that I want to share with you. Um, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, you don't have to turn there. Uh, this, this same thing is echoed in Colossians uh, chapter 3. We, we looked at these previously. Uh, in Ephesians 6, Paul says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. Now, do you ever consider that the length of your life might be dependent on how you treat your parents? <laughs> I have, when my dad was in front of me, you know, because my dad had cold gray eyes that would look at you over the top of his newspaper. And then it was not that hard to realize that your life might not last that long, you know. Uh, my dad was a man of few words. Uh, but God is making a promise that if you honor your parents, your life will go well. Okay? Now, is that same promise in effect today to believers? Well, yeah, we just read it. Okay? Paul's not writing to the Jews. Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus, which is predominantly Gentile. Okay? So, honor and obey. Obey, hupakuo, which uh, is similar to hupataso, the same root. Um, it means to listen or to hearken to a command. Okay? Just like hupataso, is, is a military term. It's where a person will voluntarily set themselves under another person's authority. This is the same idea, the same root as a military ter uh, term. Your director, your commander says, duck. He's not telling you to look around for a waterfowl. Okay? That's part of why boot camp is so difficult because they have to break your thinking and remake it so that when a command is given, you will do it instantly. Okay? So there's, there's no discussion. There's no debate. There's no looking at other views. Right, Bug? Mm -hmm. Mackenzie had a gift. Uh, she and Christopher both had a gift of wanting to see, wanting Christy and I to see the other side of things. Um, and uh, she still has that gift, from what I understand. Um, she sees multiple sides, and you have to know all of them. Um, obey is to listen to a command. Now, you notice here that he speaks of children, uh, and, and the idea is that they are in the house. They are not on their own. They're not grown to adulthood. Um, they are children, and they are required... Did you guys hear that? Okay, my ear just went really weird. Sound like a duck. <laughs> I don't like ducks. Um, but then honoring your parents, when you get to an age, an age of accountability, um, and you know the Jews, they, they had uh, 12 years old. Uh, in America, it's typically 18 years old except for, well, really, it's actually 21, except for in some cases when it's 24. 
Um, so there's, you know, this span of where you're supposed to be an adult. Uh, you always listen to your parents. You hear what they have to say. But when you grow up and you're out from under their house and their authority, um, you have to determine what your steps will be. You always honor them by hearing what they have to say, but you are not compelled to obey them in all things. And, and this is, uh, uh, we talked about this last week and asked the pastor question. It's, it's learning a new family dynamic. Okay. Um, learning to treat with your children as peers instead of just children. Um, okay, a couple, couple uh, things that I want to point out that will wait till next week. Um, there are two sides to this equation. On the one hand, if you do as God commands, you will be blessed. Okay. But on the other hand, if you do not do what God commands, bad things happen. Okay. You set yourself in opposition, not just to your parents, but to the Almighty God. Okay. So we'll look a little bit at that next week.